Hey golf fans, welcome to another episode of Up and Down, where we take a look at what's trending up and what's trending down in the game of golf. Trending up, the comeback season of Jordan Spieth continues. He authors another strong week, this time finishing solo second behind Colin Morikawa at the Open Championship. This marks his second top three finish at a major this season, and that, of course, to go along with his win at the Valero Texas Open. One would have to go all the way back to mid-February to find the last time he missed a cut, and what a difference a year makes. Last summer, he was free-falling outside of the top 60 in the official world golf rankings and was a long shot at best to make the U.S. Ryder Cup squad. But with the event being postponed till this September, he now sits 7th on the U.S. points list, just one outside of being an automatic qualifier. Even if he were to fail to crack that top six threshold, he would be all but guaranteed a captain's choice. All that to say, the fact that Jordan Spieth is back has gone from a cautious sentiment to a cold hard truth. He seems to be well on his way to whistling straights this fall. Also trending up, amateur golf at Bandon Dunes. The USGA announcing they've awarded 13 championships over the next 24 years to the spectacular layout on the Oregon coast. Last summer, Tyler Strafacci won the U.S. Men's Amateur Championship there, and over the next two dozen years, there's set to be some high-profile events, including the 2029 Walker Cup. Also, circle your calendars for the summer of 2041. This will mark the first occasion that the Men's and Women's Amateur Championships will be conducted in back-to-back -back weeks at the same venue. Think Pinehurst and the U.S. Men's and Women's Open in 2014. So over the next two dozen years, the game's future stars will head west to make their name in USGA history, and that means plenty of loops for the local caddies. We can unfortunately think of one looper in particular that may have a tough time finding a bag. Trending down. A tie for 33rd typically won't land you in the headlines, but Bryson DeChambeau managed to make some nonetheless at the Open Championship. His final round 65 bumped him up the leaderboard into a share for 33rd, but it wasn't that round that caught everyone's attention. Following an opening round 71 at Royal St. George's, he was quick to criticize his driver, going so far as to say that it sucked. His equipment manufacturer Cobra didn't take kindly to the words, and tour operations manager Ben Showman made it a point to note that everyone there is bending over backwards for him and even called DeChambeau's comments stupid. And of course, if you were wondering, Brooks Kepka did chime in on the conversation, making sure that everyone knew how much he loved his driver before he teed it up over the weekend. We wrap things up with a quick look at the peculiar major championship resume of Louis Oosthuizen over the years. It can be deemed incredibly impressive or brutally disappointing, perhaps both, depending on who you ask. His tie for third at the Open Championship marked his third consecutive close call at majors this season. He was runner-up to John Rahm at the U.S. Open and finished just two shots behind Phil Mickelson at the PJ Championship in May. In total, he's finished runner-up on six different occasions since hoisting the Claret Jug at St. Andrews in 2010. At just the age of 38, there's certainly plenty of time to secure that second major. If you're a sponsor looking to get your logo out there late Sunday during a major championship telecast, Louis Oosthuizen is certainly your guy. That's all for this episode of Up and Down. You can always head over to SI.com for more. And remember, it's not about whether you hit the perfect approach. It's about whether you get up and down from there.